Earlier, we told you that the UK's Metropolitan Police have launched an investigation into the alleged number 10 party gates um, scandal. And we'll now cross over to our RISE correspondent, Leila Johnson Salami, who is at Downing Street for more updates. Leila, thanks for joining us on Newsday. London's Metropolitan Police said they are now investigating parties held at the Prime Minister's official residence during the pandemic lockdowns. How significant is this? Extremely significant. If you recall, the Met had previously said that they would only start an internal investigation into the Partygate scandal if the Sue Gray investigation identified any evidence of crime. Well, this morning, Met Police Commissioner Cressida Dick uh, confirmed that a number of events held at Downing Street are now being investigated. She claims that this is as a result of the information that's been provided by the Cabinet Office inquiry team and also her own officer's assessment. Now, until now, like I mentioned, the force had repeatedly rejected calls to launch an investigation and this also does suggest that the Sue Gray inquiry may now not be out for another couple of weeks. And Downing Street has admitted that a party was held to mark Boris Johnson's birthday during the country's first lockdown. Um, what can you tell us more about this uh, development? Well, how are you? Simply cannot have your cake and eat it. A new ITV investigation shows that the Prime Minister celebrated his birthday party in June, on the 19th of June 2020. Now, it's been reported that 30 people gathered in the Cabinet room, and that reportedly also includes the Prime Minister's interior designer at the time, Lulu Little who, by the way, has admitted that she was there. Um, now, for the first time, Number 10 did not deny that a party actually happened right inside of this building. And that's extremely in indicting. Let's go back to December for a bit, where the Prime Minister stood up in Parliament and said that he is categorically unaware of any parties taking place in Downing Street. Well, now Number 10 themselves have confirmed that a party did, in fact, take place, although they're trying to play it down and make it seem as though it wasn't a party and the Prime Minister had only attended for 10 minutes. But the story gets a bit more insulting to the British people because six days before this, on the 13th of June, the Queen had watched a very set-back ceremony for her own birthday where her own family members couldn't attend. And the week before his birthday party, the Prime Minister had asked the rest of the country to stick to the guidance in a press conference that he held right here at Number 10. To add to that as well, one month before, the Prime Minister sent a letter to a seven-year-old girl called Josephine Broth, um, Booth, rather, praising her for cancelling her birthday party and saying that she'd set the right example. So, as you can see, this is a very, very bad situation for the Prime Minister for this to have come out. And let me re uh, remind you of the lockdown rules in the UK at that point in time. There was a ban on indoor gatherings. Outdoors was limited to six people. And interactions were supposed to be extremely and strictly limited, except for work and education purposes. So it's not looking good for the Prime Minister at all. A very down morning for him here at Downing Street. It's not looking good, is it? You know, and yesterday we also saw uh, Treasury Minister Lord Agnew resign over what he called the government's uh, lamentable record on tackling COVID business loan fraud. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, we're talking about £5 billion that currently can't be accounted for. Uh, the Treasury and Cabinet Office Minister quit his role um, in the Prime Minister's government yesterday. He said that the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy have shown what he said was a lamentable, in quotes, oversight of COVID loan schemes uh, resulting from large amounts of fraud being committed. Now, more than £47 billion was earmarked for small businesses under the uh, largest COVID scheme in the country. And according to the National Audit Office, uh, about £5 billion from that entire amount cannot be accounted for. So Lord Agnew uh, said that as a minister of counter-fraud, he felt very dishonest to stay on in this role. Um, he felt he was incapable if he cannot defend the track record. He also made it clear that he is not taking a stand against the Prime Minister, and he's sorry that it has to come at this point in time. But as you can see, it's leading to more divide within the Tory party and showing just how unstable things are at the moment. This is taxpayers' money that we're talking about. Five billion pounds unaccounted for is a serious, serious issue. So lots going on today here at Downing Street. I'm sure there are going to be more developments as the day goes on. Um, but right now, it's not looking good for the prime minister at all. And it is looking like this investigation um, that we were expecting this week from Sue Gray is not going to be out this week, especially if the Met Police are now investigating. So we do just have to wait and see.
Well, Leila, like you said, it's not really looking good for the Prime Minister, but it does seem like the Met Police investigation have, you know, bought Boris Johnson more time to stay in office since he keeps insisting that people have to wait for the outcome of the inquiry before he can be deemed guilty or innocent. Well, don't forget that the Met Police had stated that they would only start an internal investigation if the Sue Gray investigation identified some sort of evidence of crime, which does suggest that something may have come up in the Sue Gray inquiry that she needed the Met Police to look into, hence this delay and hence the Met Police getting involved now. So I wouldn't say it necessarily looks good for him. At the end of the day, if we're talking about evidence of crime here, and don't forget that the Met Police had also been spoken to by Sue Gray, and it was reported that the Met Police had given extremely extremely damning evidence against the Prime Minister. So I don't think he can have confidence in that, not, uh, especially not just yet. And pardon the noise, there's a helicopter going um, over my head. <laughs> so how are Britons, how are they reacting to this new development, this investigation from the Met, Met Police? People are absolutely um, furious, first of all, with what's going on. Let's start with the fact that last night it came out that another party scandal uh, could have happened here at Downing Street on the Prime Minister's birthday in 2020. There were calls from weeks ago for the Met Police to investigate, calls that the Met Police didn't take on. So for a lot of people, it's a question of, okay, you're only just acting now, but it is still a good thing that action is happening. Most people are extremely furious. People have missed birthdays with their loved ones. I even recall my nan's 90 birthday when none of us could be with her we were all there on zoom um, simply because we were following the guidelines and that's the story for many people across the UK people want this to come to an end as well it's been going on for weeks now and everyone is expecting a result from this investigation and now it's looking like it's going to be another couple of weeks um, before we hear anything so there's a lot of tiredness around and just people are very fed up um, which is very understandable at this point in time well, uh, Leila Johnson Salami, thank you so much for helping us clear up some of those issues. And we will be uh, in touch with you over the next coming days as this story continues to develop.